Hey guys, welcome back to another 3D printing video. And today we're gonna to be looking at this Flash Forge that I got from eBay that initially had a problem. So believe it or not, I figured out what the problem was and it actually powers on right now. So I can't wait to show you guys what I have found. All right, let's get started. So for any of you that haven't seen the previous video of this printer, I bought it on eBay as a customer returned item. It ended up not working at all. And not only that, it has even damage on the top, which we'll get to. So what was happening is the power supply was completely shorting out. It has a little green light here and that would just go dark, which led me to think that something was shorted. And after I unplugged all the plugs and it was still shorting, that's when I decided that the board was the issue or somewhere on the board. And believe it or not guys, it actually was. So what I did is I used another power supply, which I have like a bench top power supply where I can adjust the voltage and the amperage. And I connected it straight to the pins here on the board. My thought was since, you know, this board was bad already, if I fried anything, I wouldn't worry about it too much, I guess. So I went ahead and gave it power. At only about two volts, the amperage was already a one amp. So I knew that something was directly shorting out. So all I did is I bumped up the voltage a little bit more to about three volts and I let it sit there for about five minutes. And then I went with my finger and I just kind of felt if I could find anything hot because I knew if something was shorting out, something was getting warm or hot. And believe it or not guys, eventually I realized it was in this zone right here because this whole area was getting warm. So there's a diode right here right next to the plug. That was getting warm naturally just because it was draining. I noticed something over here. Let's see if I can get closer. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a bunch of diodes right here. And one of these diodes was extremely hot and it looked a little bit different than the rest of them. If you guys can see that these little peach ones right here, there's another peach one that's supposed to be right there. So that, once I got my finger on that, it was extremely hot and it was almost like burning it. So I knew that was probably the issue and not only that it looked different than these like it was like it had like damage to it like it looked like it was bubbling and stuff it was just weird looking. So after playing around for a while in this section here trying to figure out maybe it's you know somewhere shorting in here or in there or somewhere I just went ahead and decided that I'll just unsolder this thing. So once I gave it power again to the board all of a sudden I had no draw at all or very minimal and that's when I thought hmm maybe this will work. So immediately I decided, hey, I should plug it back into, you know, the printer and see what happens. So I plugged everything back on, put the board on. I plugged in the power cord that it came with, turned it on, and then went to the front and hit that little power button by the LCD. And in about a second or so, it powered on and started doing its thing. I was very, very surprised by that. It looked like I had a working printer. So I'm not exactly sure how the printer is going to operate since it's missing this little diode here. Or should I say not dialed, but resistor. I think that's what it was here. But I have a feeling it's going to be fine. But we'll just have to see. So let me just show you guys what I'm talking about here. I'm going to plug it in. So the power is actually on already here in the back. So here on the front, it's going to hit this power button here. And the lights came on. So the screen should pop up. There it goes. So the printer came back to life, guys. And what you heard there is the startup, I guess, sound. So as you can see here, everything is working on the LCD screen. So even if I push it, let's see. There we go. So everything is working just like it's supposed to, seems like. So that's kind of weird that all I did was take out that one resistor and everything's fine. So I guess it was shorting out. So hopefully whatever that resistor was doing is not going to, you know, cause me trouble in the long run. But let's see if we can move all these parts around here, all the axes. All right, so here we have the movement. So let's go, ahead, let's go ahead and start with the Z here. And as you can see guys, the bed is moving up. So it's moving up and down. So now we're gonna do the X. And now the Y. And as you can see guys, all the axes work. All the motors work, seems like. So I think the printer's working. Well, let's see if we can preheat the nozzle. Let's see if that works. Right there guys, you can see it says I'm heating up. So it seems like everything is working. Okay, I just heard that this fan right here came on. You guys can probably hear that. Oh yeah, that's getting hot. So it's definitely working. 
And you can see there are little lights here. here. Alright, so we're just going to cancel that because I'm pretty sure that's flying. About. So here's everything about our machine apparently. Oh, uh, here's something cool guys. Usage counter. So there's only two hours of usage on this guy. So this this machine has not been used very much at all. So I have a feeling the person that returned this machine returned it because it quit working on him because of that resistor that we took out. So it looks like it only had about two hours of work time and then it failed. And it's kind of crazy that somebody gouged this plate out here on the first print or second print that they've done okay so I guess I pushed on home let's see if it'll go home okay. all right so it works it goes home all right guys well I'm super happy that this thing is running I did not even think that that would be possible but somehow we got it to run and now we can proceed with the repairs. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this thing off. Are you sure? Yes. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to take all this apart here and I wanna see how I'm gonna repair this bracket because that's the biggest problem right now. And we're gonna have to, you know, like do a little bit of cable management here because this thing is just laying down here on the belt. And I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do about the bed yet. After looking at it close, it looks like there's a piece of glass underneath this sticker here. So I might just take the sticker off and use the glass maybe. Either that or maybe I'll put some kind of epoxy in here to uh, level this out so we can print on top of it. All right, so I need to cut the zip tie that I put up here. So it looks like we got two of these little bushing bearing things here. So I think we got all we gotta do is just slide this belt out of that thing. And that's what it looks like. There it goes. So this is the piece that broke off right there. That sort of looks like a pretty low quality piece of plastic. I don't know why. Maybe just the way it broke off. It looks like those crumbly kind. So I went online to see if I can find this bracket and buy it. And Flash Forge does have the bracket for sale and for a really good price of $11 plus shipping. But the only problem is, is they will not ship it to Hawaii and that's where I live. So unfortunately a lot of these companies don't ship to Hawaii and I understand why because you know if you're sending priority stuff like a small flat rate box that's the same as it is in, in any state so kind of frustrating but that's one of the things I have to deal with because I live here. But in any case so and it looks like that nobody in Thingiverse has created a bracket like this for me to print and I don't think I am capable of making something this complicated in you know. A 3d software so my plan is is to glue the bottom parts first like this so the bearings go in there nicely just like that and so I'm gonna glue that in first and then and then once I that glue once that sticks good I'm gonna glue the top piece and this is the glue I'll be using it's called e6000 it's also known as goop I think they're pretty much the same thing and this stuff works like magic guys and this would probably be more than enough and the great part about this is that it's a rubber when it dries it becomes like a really hard rubber so here's the update so far I got everything glued up and as you can see guys I got a bunch of zip ties everywhere holding it together so that's going very well so I need to give it about 12 hours or so on the zip ties and then I can cut those loose and then within about 24 hours it should be very still so I might just leave them on there for overnight but yeah I was able to line everything up and get it exactly where it needs to be and the zip ties worked out really really good I went ahead and bent this switch here back where it's supposed to be so it's pretty good now too and also I decided to fill this little hole here with super glue it's kind of hard to see but the super glue is put in there with a little bit of a, a little more than I need so later once it dries up I'm just gonna sand it down and that should be pretty flat so once this glue cures we're, we're gonna power it on and see if we can uh, do our first print maybe so that's pretty exciting all right so it's the next day and our mount is nice and glued so you can see guys that you know it doesn't look perfect but I think it's going to be more than adequate to uh, hold this whole assembly so I went ahead and put the belt on and you can see that the glue is still a little squishy because it's very thick layer here but where it's thinner it's really hard and uh, yeah everything looks nice and smooth and I made sure that this was level with the bottom so we can get good square prints so yeah, it appears to be a success for this. So the bed I also fixed, I went ahead and put super glue in that hole. And then when that dried, I just sliced it off. And now when I run my finger over it, I basically cannot feel anything almost. So pretty much we have everything ready that we need to do to get this thing going. So let's go ahead and power it on here. 
and we'll go ahead and feed the filament into here and then we're going to try to do the outer leveling bed I also wanted to show you that I put a piece of tape right here just so this ribbon cable is not dragging over here on the belt at least for now but later I'm going to have to put something sticky on the back there to uh, fix it alright so let's go ahead and find the leveling bed here we go please wait extruder and platform okay so it's all moving to where it needs to go I guess okay so it's telling us to screw the screws until you know we're bottomed out so I'm pretty sure we're low enough let's push ok and then it says are you sure yes we are so I guess now we're going to start the leveling of the bed Oh, look at that, guys. There's like a little arm that comes out with a switch. Verifying the distance between the nozzle and the plate, what it says up there. Okay, so it's telling us to turn the knob clockwise, I guess, so... Okay, so I turned it a little and it told me to stop. So we'll go ahead and verify. Alright, so I guess it says congratulations, we're done with that point. So now we're going to the next one, I'm guessing, yeah. Cool. So I guess we're going to repeat it for the three knobs there, and then we should be done. So the other two went pretty quick, and it says leveling complete. So let's just click on finish, and it looks like our bed is going all the way down. Or not all the way, but somewhat down. Alright, so we got the bed leveled, so that's a plus, so everything works there. But let's go ahead and try to load some filament, this one that we have here. Load. So it's going to need to heat up. So the bed goes all the way down, I guess, when you load the filament. Yeah, it's heating up pretty quick. Look how quick it heats up. Or it seems like it's pretty quick. So less than a minute and we're already there. Just crazy. Okay, so I guess now we need to push the filament to the extruder. So I guess we'll go ahead and do that. Actually, I think, guys, that there's supposed to be some kind of tube that goes from here to here. Um, that little baggie had this little piece right here, but I'm going to go ahead and put it through here. Just like that. That way it's kind of, you know, holding it a little bit more upright. So we're just going to push it in there. I think it's already feeding. Yeah, it's feeding. I can see it feeding. Okay, yeah, there it goes. Okay, I'm going to push done. It's definitely coming down. Alright, so we're done loading the filament. So the only thing left to do now is to see if we can print something. Let's see if there's anything on this, on the file here. Build. So it looks like we have a couple things. It looks like there's a test tube, so that's perfect. Let's go ahead and print that and see. I guess this came with the printer, most likely. Alright, so it's going to take only 11 minutes to build that. Let's go. So it's preheating and uh, homing. I guess I need to go ahead and move all this. And here's the cool part, guys. Look at this. It's actually showing us what we're printing. That's super cool. So we have some stop, pause, and some kind of menu buttons here as options. Let's see. Okay, so it's ready to print. It's going for it. Well, hopefully our bed leveling is good enough. Seems to be all right. It's putting a really thick layer down. I don't know if you can see that, but it looks like it's putting down a really thick layer in the beginning. Now we'll see what it turns out to be. It's kind of interesting. Definitely moving around pretty quick. So what, whoever sliced this is probably a more of a rough slice. So here we have the temperature, the time that's left, that's super cool, and the percentage of what's done. So let's check out what this button does, out of curiosity. Alright, so here we have how long we've been building, and I guess where our z-axis is, and so we're one millimeter off the floor, I guess. And how much filament we used, and the printing speed. I wonder if any of this is adjustable. Oh, look at that, it is. That's so cool, so I can slow down the printing speed. Right, what did I just do? Okay, for some reason the color of the screen changed. Did it all turn blue? Super weird. So here looks like we also have the light button. If I click it, and the light turns on and off. So that's kind of cool. And I guess you do have a button here that says finish and shut down. So I guess if you want to just abandon the whole thing. Unless it means once it's done, it'll be finished and shut down. I, don't know, I guess we got to read the instructions on that one. Alright, well, other than that, everything's going pretty good, except the screen definitely changed color. Alright guys, I don't know if you can see it, but it built a raft. 
so it's it's printing the cube on a raft so now it makes sense why it was so rough on the beginning all right so the printer's still printing but the screen completely turned off i don't know what happened exactly there at first it turned kind of blue and then it completely turned off i wonder if something happened and it burned out or I don't know, but the printer's still printing. I kind of want to push this button, but I don't want to do it since it's still printing, so I'm just going to wait till it's done and then I'll mess with it. But yeah, that's kind of crazy. That was weird. So it looks like it's done. And you can see it's pulling down some filament there with it. I guess I'm going to go ahead and try to click this. Hmm, look at that. Well, the cube is done. Let's take a closer look at it here. So they printed on the raft, and it seems to be like a pretty nice square. There was some kind of issue right there on the bottom, as you can see. Almost looks like an under extrusion issue. Or maybe a ship. No, actually, yeah, it is an under extrusion. Because what that line is, is actually the hole. I'm going to turn the printer off in the back and turn it back on. I hope this screen is going to come back to life. If it doesn't, then we're going to have an issue, for sure. I'm going to click it off. And let's see what happens when I turn it on. All right, let's see. The function seems to work, but the screen's not coming up. Well, thankfully the printer works, just the screen doesn't work. I wonder if it has a back connection behind it or something. Or maybe in the back. Maybe I need to take the panel off in the back and check that because I did disconnect it from the board. All right, so I got the back off. I think this is the ribbon that goes up. So I guess I need to shut it off. It appears to be in there really good. I'm not sure what the issue is. So I guess I'm going to play around with this and we'll see. Alright, so there's good news. I fiddled around with this wire and it looks like I didn't plug it in as good. Or maybe crooked. And I powered it back on and the screen lit up. So we're back in action. So, so I guess I can put this cover back on and uh, let's look at the print that we printed. Alright, so here is what the cube looks like. And it doesn't look too bad. Let's go ahead and try to see if we can get it off of there. Now, I didn't even use any... Whoa. I didn't even use any glue, guys. And you can see it stuck on there pretty well, surprisingly. I, for some reason, I didn't even think about putting glue on there. I should have, probably. Even without the glue, you can see it's still printed. So let's see how hard it is to take this raft off. Okay, it's coming off. It's actually not that bad. And there's the raft. So here's the bottom print. Then we got the sides here and the top. So overall, the cube looks really, really good for a really fast print. Not sure exactly what the settings are, but this was definitely a fast print of 11 minutes. All right, guys, so it looks like we have a printer that works now. And the little LCD in here going out was a little of a scare moment, but, you know, I, that was my own fault because when I plugged it back in in the back, I didn't do a good job and put it in Cricut or whatever it was. But so all our workings here work fine. And the glue, I think, will be holding up great. So I still have to do a little bit of cable sticking over here to the back but yeah it seems like a really really nice little printer so far I'm really enjoying this LCD screen it's very intuitive and easy to use so even though this bed didn't have a heated bed still see that it sticks pretty well to it so I'm pretty excited that we got it to work and everything's fine so now I need to go into the flash forge little software that they have for this printer and maybe play around with that and see you know what I can print on this thing so all in all I'm very pleased that I got this printer even though it was a pretty big risk and it could have turned all south on me so on the next video guys I'm going to be printing out some more things on this and I might also have to build a little stand here for a filament holder because the filament holder in the back there is not gonna hold anything reasonable it comes with like a little spool that I guess is special just for this printer and I'm not gonna make special spools or anything just for this guy we're just gonna rig something up where we can feed this thing from the top down so yeah guys, stay tuned for that video, a lot more exciting things to come for this printer. And uh, we'll be able to compare the print quality to our Ender 2 and the Modern Price. Because all these printers have this pretty much the same bed size there. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then hit that like button. And if you thought we were going to get this thing running, then hit that like button again. Actually, no, don't hit it twice. And if you enjoy videos like this and you want to see more and you're not subscribed to this channel, then hit that subscribe button. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.